I'm Alex Paul, Marketing Communications Director for GlobeTech, your power partner, uh, provider of uh, power supply solutions. This is the second module of our instructional series, Power Supply Basics. It's intended for professionals, business professionals, uh, administrative people, salespeople, who want to understand power supplies but don't want to go through an engineering degree program to learn them. This is not going to teach you engineering level stuff about power supplies, but it will teach you enough of the basics that you'll be able to follow along in the conversation and understand what the engineers or your customers are asking about or talking about in the conversation. So, in our last module we covered what a power supply is and uh, what AC and DC power are. This module we're going to talk about AC to DC power supplies, a fundamental uh, type of power supply that you'll find everywhere in your household. Uh, basically, AC to DC power supplies are your wall warts, your desktop supplies, which primarily differ from wall warts in that uh, it's a box that's attached to the cable which then gets plugged into another cable that gets attached to the wall uh, hence calling it a desktop even though you put it on the floor and a wall wart which uh, you plug into the wall and it sticks out of the wall and that's why people call it a wall wart they're essentially the same type of product uh, also there are products that are AC to DC power supplies that you don't think are AC to DC power supplies in this case this is a power over ethernet injector uh, power over ethernet is a way to send electrical power down an ethernet cable to drive things like uh, security checkpoints, uh, security cameras, uh, sales kiosks, anything where you don't want to run both a power line and a signal line to. Uh, so that's a power over ethernet injector, so it takes in AC power and you put in the uh, ethernet cable in this end and an ethernet cable with power comes out of this end. So this is actually an AC to DC converter, even though to an IT professional they would probably think of this more as a uh, system adapter or uh, add-on to the cable for additional uh, functionalities, not realizing, or probably realizing, but not think of it in the context that this provides AC to DC power conversion for that remote Ethernet powered system. So you can have a wall ward, you can have a desktop supply, but essentially an AC DC power supply uh, takes the wall current and converts it into DC current for uh, whatever your application is. Now, um, some people may tell you that DC power is for low power applications and AC is for high power applications, but you can have small AC supplies as well as large DC supplies just uh, to show you, and we'll talk about this farther on in the next module, uh, DC DC, but this is a a 6,000 volt DC power supply. So um, the amount of power that a circuit handles has nothing to do with whether it's an AC supply or a DC supply. Now inside of a wall wart, you're going to find Former? essentially a power supply. Passers. So you can see the transformer here that provides the some of the basic uh, power conversion and then the capacitors that do the storage and the diodes and the various components that uh, provide filtering and rectification. So essentially the power supply is an electronic circuit that takes the current from the wall, converts it into a DC a direct current that can be used by the electronic circuit because most circuits use uh, direct current. The uh, supplies that uh, provide AC are used mostly for things like motors or other functions where they're either trying to uh, easily rectify the, uh, the current at the other end because AC is, is um, in some ways easier to manipulate at uh, high currents and high voltages. Uh, but the primary aspect of an AC to DC power supply is to just simply eliminate the alternating aspect of the power and make it direct current. There are certain things that uh, you could notice about this and one of them is the fact that there's a plate of metal and here where the there's a, with the trans a transistor uh, screwed onto screen. and that's to capture the heat because there's when you're talking about power, no matter how much power you have, there's always heat involved because the conversion is never perfect. So when you have problems with a product because of heat, nine times out of ten it's because of power conversion. For example, the famous tablet manufacturer whose name I don't need to mention had some uh, thermal concerns because people felt hot spots in the tablet. Those are the places where a lot of power conversion or power consumption is going on. Either the driver circuit for the backlight or the uh, driver for the microprocessor that does all of the thinking because it's essentially just a big switch 
engine converting electricity into thought, as it were, and it takes a lot of power. So where, that where the power is being converted, there are inefficiencies. The inefficiencies almost always involve heat, and that's why heat is a big issue in power conversion. Not just AC-DC, but DC-DC as well. But uh, in every power supply, you're going to see some kind of thermal management scheme, either using a putty that can help take the heat away from a device to another uh, surface or an actual metal surface integrated into the power supply itself. So an AC-DC power supply takes electricity from the wall, converts it into direct current, and then uh, gives you that current for your product. So with the DC power, the power goes out of the battery, out of the generator, out of the uh, solar cell, goes through the circuit, and comes back to the source, to direct current, just follows the line. In the case of AC, the uh, transmission station, the power station, there's no loop going back to the power station giving you a return current on that power. The power goes out from the power station and is used and dissipated at the point of load, as it were. The facility, the house, the washing machine, or whatever. The energy is either used by machinery or devices or lights within that um, end point, and then it's dissipated to ground there. The ground as in the earth. Now AC doesn't have a ground per se. It has a reference that the sine wave works from. For example, in the case of AC, as I said, it is a wave. And the frequency of this wave coming out of our walls, for example, is 60 hertz. That's the frequency of the wave. The amplitude of the wave is 110 volts, the pressure of the energy behind that wave. Uh, 110, it's actually uh, more than that, but the working voltage is around 110 volts. Now, the zero point is a reference. The way to understand that from your household point of view is you've probably seen people changing light fixtures or you've seen wires sticking out of the walls in your house. And they have a color code. The white is the reference, right? Zero reference. Zero reference. And that's this here, the zero reference. The black line is the hot. That's this part, the power itself. Okay, so got a white line, got a black line. There is a green line, and that is real ground. So that's there for safety purposes. If there's something wrong with the device, if there's a short circuit, if something wrong happens electrically, this power could then go to the real ground. It doesn't, the ground isn't used in the circuit at all. If you notice, a lot of products don't have a grounding plug. Matter of fact, that's what the third plug, the third connector in your three-prong wall plug is. That third prong is the quote-unquote real ground. One of those prongs, is your reference ground, and one of those prongs is your hot line. In some products, it matters what the sine wave is and which side of the circuit is the reference side and which side of the circuit is the hot side. That's why one blade is thicker than the other on a power plug. If you look at your power plug, you'll see that the one plug is thicker than the other in a lot of products. That's so that you put the plug in the di right direction into the socket, providing the proper phase for the uh, electric electricity that's going into the device. So now that we've talked about what AC is, and I was being very, very, very uh, cursory here. I mean, there are a lot of other factors involved in this and uh, ways that it's being managed, but the bottom line to remember is AC is a sine wave of power that runs off of a reference, not a ground, and 
the color coding is going to be different in an AC system than in a DC system. We're going to cover DC systems in the third talk of this series, but for now we're just going to talk about uh, AC and uh, AC systems. So a switching power supply operates completely different to the point where if I drew a diagram for you, unless you actually understood the fundamentals behind it, let's leave it as saying that the uh, Remember how I sh uh, showed earlier how the waveform can be changed by blocking half of it or by converting half of it? Uh, switch mode power supply uses fundamental uh, technologies of that nature using devices like diodes and capacitors to create um, rectification, which it, rectifying is the term they use to, for changing the uh, waveform, for the rectification and uh, voltage changing and adjustment and also to manage that process they use um, electronic gate devices called diodes that allow current to only go in one direction and they use capacitors which store energy and resistors that uh, throttle it and using them in various combinations create electronic gates that take that sine wave at the higher voltage and convert it to a direct current at a lower voltage. So uh, linear supplies are much more uh, brute force and fundamental in their operation and switch mode power supplies are more uh, sophisticated in the manner in which they operate but they are much more complicated. So in, but in the result, the uh, linear power supply, the big advantages are simplicity and, and uh, cheap uh, at a loss, at an inefficiency, at a lack of uh, high end performance. Whereas a switch mode power supply is much more efficient and much more powerful but may cost you more. In fact, Linear power supplies are banned in many countries now because they are so inefficient and they're only allowed for use in very specialty applications which require uh, some of the attributes of a linear supply which involve things like being very, very uh, quiet and smooth. So you could almost make the argument tube amplification versus transistor amplification in music for the ways that a linear power supply behaves differently than a uh, switch mode power supply and for very similar reasons actually. So an AC power supply is a basic building block of most systems because every system takes DC, I should say almost every system as I said, motors and such are a different uh, aspect as far as the power. But the key to remember with an AC power supply is it has to be compatible with the wall, has to be compatible with the device, should be properly packaged and uh, managed for thermal and it doesn't have to be in a configuration that you're used to seeing. It could be something that's incorporated into a computer device or into a second device, but there's an AC-DC power supply in there somewhere. So that's our module on AC-DC power supplies. It's pretty straightforward because it's a pretty straightforward device. Our next module will cover DC-DC, which is where things start to get a little bit more complicated. This is Alex Paul for Globe Tech. Visit us at uh, www.globetech.com. Thanks and have a great day.